Good morning. We are up to the seventh portion of Bereshis, Shavi, Shabbos of the portion of Bereshis. Chapter 5, verse 25, Perek Hei, Pasuk Chaf Hei. So continuing with the generations from Adam and Eve till the birth of Noach, here we have Pasuk Chaf Hei. Vayechim Mesushelach, and Mesushelach lived. Sheva Ushmeinim Shano Miyashana, 187 years. Vayoledes Lamech, and he gave birth to Lamech. Vayechim Mesushelach, Mesushelach lived. Acharei Helida Yes Lamech, after he gave birth to Lamech. Shtayim Ushmeinim Shano, Shva Meyashana. 782 years, Vayeled Banim Mavanais, and he gave birth to sons and daughters. 27, Vayeyu Kol Yemei Mesushelach, and all the days of Mesushelach were, Teisha Veshishim Shana, Utesha Meyay Shana, 969 years, Vayamais, and he died. Chavches, Vayechi Lemech, and Lemech lived, Shtayim Ushmeinim Shana, Miya Shana, 182 years, by Yelet Bain, and he had a son. Rashi, Chav Ches, 28, by Yelet Bain, and he had a son. Shemimenu Nivna Ha'ilam. This son is from where the world was built up. And it's interesting to point out that it should have said that he begot Noach, but it doesn't say he begot. He says, by Yelet Bain, he gave birth to a son. Bain coming from the word of Binyan, which means to build. Because Noah built up the entire world after the destruction, as we'll see in Parshas Noah. Chaf Test 29, and he named his son Noah, saying, This one will bring us rest from our work, and the anguish of our hands, Min ha'adama from the ground, asher eirara Hashem, which Hashem has cursed. Rashi 29, ze yinachamenu, this one will bring us rest. Yonach mimenu es itzvan yadenu. So Rashi says, he will give us rest from the hard work of our hands. At sheloi ban nayach, before nayach came into this world, loi ha yolehem kli macharesha, they had no tools to do the agricultural work, and Noyach prepared and gave them these tools. The earth was producing thorns and thistles, when the wheat was sown, all the way back from the curse of Adam, but when it came to the days of Noach, all of this ceased. And this is the intent of the word yinachamenu, coming from the word of resting. Because if you don't explain yinachameyu as the word of resting, you might think that it comes from the word of minachem, which means to comfort. So Rashi explains, if you're going to use that expression, ein tam alashen, then there's no meaning of the term neifal al Hashem, relating to the name of Noyach. Then you'll, have be, you'll be forced, the atta tzarich likrois shemay menachem, then you'll have to call him menachem. And we know his name wasn't menachem, his name was Noyach. Verse 30, Vayechi lemech, and Lemech lived after he gave birth to Nayach, 595 years, and he had sons and daughters. 31, and all the days of Lemech were 777 years, and he died. 32, Vayehi Noyach ben Chamesh Meyeshana. Noyach was 500 years old. Vayeled Noyach. And Noyach gave a produced a shame as Cham vias Yafes. Shame, Cham and Yafes. Rashi 32, ben Chamesh Meyeshana. You know, Noach was 500 years old. Omar Rabbi Yudan, Rabbi Yudan says, Matam, kol had, matam, what's the reason why the Torah is telling us how old Noach was? 500 years old. Kol haderish haylidu lekuf shana. The answer is because all of the previous generations before Noach 
everyone had children at the age of the Kufshana of a hundred years. Vizeh, but this one, Nayach, how old was he when he had children? Lachamesh Mayes, 500 years old. So, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem says, Im Rishayim Heim, if these people work to be wicked, Yev Dumamayim, they will be destroyed by the flood waters. Vira Litzadik Zeh, which will cause incredible grief and anguish to this righteous man, meaning Nayach. And if they are righteous, then I would have to burden him <coughs> to build many arks. Because if Noah would have had a child at 100 years old, and the flood will come when he was 600 years old, he would have had children for 500 years already. He would have many children and grandchildren by the time the flood came about. And if that's the case, then he would have to build many arks. One ark would not suffice. So therefore... He restrained his source. And he had no children. Hashem made sure that he did not have any children until he was 500 years old. Today, in order, so that Yefes, his oldest son, would not be at punishable age before the flood. As it says, because the youngster will die when he is 100 years old. Meaning, at the age which he will be liable <coughs> for punishment in the future time. So it was before the Torah was given. Which means that when a person before the flood was punishable age, was at how old? A hundred years old. And at that time, uh, I'm sorry, after Nayach was 600 years old, the flood making Yafes less than a hundred years old because the life expectancy was so much greater then. So therefore, being that the life expectancy was so much more than it was before, then the punishable age was not reached until 100 years old. As we're going to see, the life expectancy became way down till 120 years and therefore the punishable age was much earlier afterwards. Chapter 6, verse, no, sorry, one more Rashi, as shame as cham as yafes, shame cham and yafes. The question is, it says shame cham and yafes in this order. If we just learned that yafes is the oldest one, why doesn't it say yafes first? Fala yafes hu agadah Rashi says, wasn't yafes the oldest? Ella shebatchila ata deresh eshem. First, we discuss shame. Why? Shehu tzadik, because he was righteous. V'neila keshehu mahul, he was also born circumcised. V'she'avraham yatsa mimenu, and from whom Avraham descended. And being that it started with shame, because he was the righteous one, then it went from the youngest to oldest, instead of oldest to youngest. Cham is in the middle, no matter what. And then it went to Yafes. Chapter 6, verse 1, Perek Vav, Pasuk Aleph. By he ki hechela adam, now we begin the terrible times of the people, the immoral and corrupt nation. By he, and it came to be, ki hechela adam, when men began l'arayv to multiply, al pnei adam on the face of the earth, uva nais yodu lahem, and daughters were born to them. Bez, verse 2, the sons of the ruler saw as b'nei Adam the daughters of man, that they were good looking, they were fair, they took for themselves wives, from whoever they chose. It didn't matter if they were married or not, they wanted them, they took them. Rashi 2, b'nei ho'elihim, this is not the sons of God, but b'nei hasorim v'hashayftim, meaning the sons of princes and rulers. That's one interpretation. Another interpretation of Rashi, davar acher b'nei ho'elihim, heim hasorim ha'hilchim b'shluchus ha'shamakim, they are the angels who go as messengers of God. Af heim ha'yu misarvim b'hem, even the angels intermingled with them. Kol Elokim Sheba Mikra Lashe Marus. Whenever it mentions the word Elokim in Torah, it has the meaning of authority. 
and the following is indicative. You will be his master. See that I have made you a master. So Elohim represents authority. That the girls were fair, they were good looking. So Rashi says something very interesting here. Amar Rabbi Yudan, Rabbi Yudan says, Tavas Ksiv. It doesn't say Tavas like it normally would, Tes Vav Vez Vav Saf. It says Tavas, Tes Vav Saf. So something is lacking. What was lacking over here? Tavas Kishahayu Metivin Isai, when they improved their appearance, Mikushetes Likanis Lachupa be beautifying themselves before entering the marriage canopy, before going to the chuppah, as we know. A bride beautifies herself. She has her manicure and pedicure and facials in order to make herself look so beautiful. Then the head ruler, the prince, would come in and enter. First, he would want to have relations with her, and then she would marry her respective husband. So therefore, it says Tavais. It says it looks like Tavas and not Tavais. Continuing in Rashi, Mikhail Shabacharu, from wherever they chose, Af Ulas Baal, even a married woman, if they wanted her, they would take her. Again, showing the corruption and immorality of that generation. Af Hazachar, not only human beings, but even not even not only females, but even males, and not only human beings. The habehema, even animals, they would take and have their way with as well, and be intimate with them. Verse three: Vayei mer Hashem, and Hashem said, La yod in ruchi va'adam la'elam. My spirit will not continue to judge man in this way forever. Bishagam huvasar. Why? Since he is nothing but flesh. Veha yu yamav, and here is where Hashem took away the long life expectancy of. 500, 600, 1,000 years old, and now he says that the days of man shall be may of Esim Shana, only 120 years old. Gimel Rashi, La Yadan Ruchi Adam, my spirit will not continue to judge man. La Yisra'im, the Yadiv Ruchi Allah, my spirit will not be in, dan- in anger and in conflict. Bishvila Adam, because of this man. Li Ailam forever. What's forever? Le'erech yamim, a very long time. Hine ruchi nadem bekirbay, behold my spirit is contending within me, im lahashchis v'im l'rachim. Should I destroy them, or should I give them and show them mercy? La'yiyeb madin zebe ruchi, this conflict will not be with me anymore, le'olam, for a very long time, forever, kolemar, le'erech yamim, for a very long time. Therefore, I can't, Hashem says, I can't go back and forth, should I destroy them, should I not? When they're 600, 700, and 1,000 years old, I'm making their life expectancy only 120 years. For, so, for 120 years, Hashem will decide, should this person live or should this person pass away? Bishagam huvasar, since he is nothing but flesh, kimei, bishagam bisegoyl, this is a grammatical Rashi, kuleimar bishvil, shagam zeis baisha huvasar, it's only flesh. V'yafabichei, nevertheless, ene nichna lefanai, he does not humble himself before me, but if he was fire, or of something of hard substance, then it would be very, very difficult to, uh, how much more insubordinate this person would be if that was the case. Sorry, continuing in Rashi, similarly, should be interpreted as Next Rashi, his days shall be, etc. And here is what Hashem says, according to Rashi, I will delay my anger towards them only up to 120 years. If they will not repent, of Yalehem Abul, then I'll bring a flood upon them. Vim Taimar, and if you'll ask, Mishanilad Yafes Adam Abul, from the birth of Yafes until the Mabul, till the flood, Aina Elamea Shana, it was only a hundred years, not a hundred and twenty years. So why does it say that it's a hundred and twenty years? Ain Mukdam. So the answer is the famous answer that's always given, Ain Mukdam Mukhar Bateira. There is no chronological order to the Taira. 
So this decree, Kivar Haisa Akzeira Gzura, the decree had already been decreed. Esrim Shana Kaidim Shaheli Nayachate Laddais. Twenty years before Nayach had children. The Chemat Sinu Beseder Elam, and this is what we find in the book Seder Olam. Yesh Midrashe Agada Rabbim, and there are many Agadak interpretations of this. Bila Yadain, regarding the words of La Yadain. Avozehu Tzichzulach Pshutai Rashi says, this is the smooth and plain explanation. Verse 4, Hanefilim Hayuva Aretz, they were giants on the earth by Yamim Mahem in those days. Vigam Acharechein, and also later, Asha Yava, Yubineho Elihim, when the sons of the rulers came. El Benaisa Adam to the daughters of man, Viyaldu Lahem, and they bore children to them. Heim Mahagi Bayrim Hashem Ayelam, these were the mightiest ones who ever existed. Anche Hashem, they were men of renown and famous people. Rashi Han Nefilim. What does the word Han Nefilim mean, Rashi says? Here it's translated as giants, but Rashi gives another interpretation. Han Nefilim, Al Shem Shen Naflu. They were so called because Nafal, they fell. Vihipilu Esa'ilam and brought a big downfall to the world through their corruption and through their immorality. Of Lashen Ivris, and according to the Hebrew explanation, Lashen Anakim, who it means giants. Ayamim Mahaim, continuing in Rashi, in those days, be made der Enosh of Nekayin. In the days of Enosh and the sons of Kayin. The Agam Acharechain, and also in later days, Afapishado be Avdan, even though these people saw the destruction that happened in the famous Shelder Enosh of the generation of Enosh, Sha'ala Ukyanus. The hates of Shlisha Elam. Back then, there was a big ocean that rose and flooded a third of the world. Like Nichna Deramabul, the generation of the flood did not learn from that and did not get humbled from this. Lil Mayhem to learn from them, and they still went around and did their their ways of corruption and immoral acts. Asher Yavayu, continuing in Rashi, when they came, Hayu Yod, they Nakim, they, the mothers, they gave birth to the children, Kim Maisam, like them, the fathers. Hagi Bairim, the mightiest ones, Limroid Mamakim, the ones that rebelled against God, that's why they're called the mighty ones. Anche Hashem, men of renown, Eis and Shenikva B'Shem, those who had distinctive names, famous people, like Irod, Michu Yael, Misu Sha'el, Shenikva Hashem, who were so called because of Avdan, their destruction that they brought up to the world, Shenimeichu Vuhutashu, from the words of wiping out and torn out, that's one explanation. Davar Acher, another interpretation is, Anche Shimamain, men of devastation. Sheshimimu Esa'ilam, who brought devastation to the world. Verse 5, Pasuk Hei, Vayar Hashem, and Hashem saw, Ki Rabba Ra'asa Adam Ba'aretz, that men's wickedness had totally increased in this world, Bechol Yetzer Machshaves Libay, and every inclination of the person's heart, Rak Ra Kol Hayyim. There was only evil all day long. Continuing verse 6, Vayinachim Hashem, and Hashem was comforted, Ki also asa Adam Ba'aretz, that he had made man on earth, Vayis Yatzev Elibay, and he grieved in his heart. And here's a beautiful Rashi. Rashi Vav, Vayinachim Hashem, Ki also Hashem was comforted that he had made. Nechama Haisalafana, it was a comfort to him, Shebiroi Batachtoinim, that he created man on earth. Why? Because Hashem says, Can you imagine if I created these human beings up in heaven? What kind of rebellion would take pl up place in heaven? Thank God they're only on this lowly world. Sheilu Hayamin Hoyal Yainim, for had he been one of the heavenly beings, Hayamam Ridin, there will be a great cause of rebel up in heaven. And he grieved. Who, who grieved? Ha'adam, man grieved. And here is an interpretation according to Rashi that it's not that Hashem grieved, but man grieved when he saw that, wow, what am I doing to this world? And this was a beginning of tshuva process and purification of the world. el in his heart. Whose heart? The man's heart or God's heart? Rashi says, Shel the heart of God. Allah, Shel 
meaning to say it entered the thought of Hashem, to make him grieve, to make the human being grieve. Zeo targum unklus, this is according to the interpretation of unklus. That's one interpretation. Rashi brings another one. Davaracher, another interpretation is Vayinachim on the word. Vayinachim. And was comforted. Who was comforted? Nefcha machashavte shamakim. Hashem's thought turned, mimidas rachamim, from applying the divine name of mercy, the midas hadin, to the divine name of justice. He reconsidered in his own mind, allegorically speaking. What should I do with man that he made on the earth? Whenever the Torah uses the word nichum, it means he reconsidered as to what to do with. And no man that he should reconsider the avod of yis necha ma'inochem Hashem al ra'ah Hashem reconsidered doing the terrible things nichamti ki him lachti kulam lashem machashava acheres heim all these refer to second thoughts ayisyate veliba and he grieved in his heart nis abel al avdan masay yadav he mourned the destruction of his handiwork kimay netzav hamelech abinay like a king that mourns for his son. Rashi says, I wrote this in response to the many heretics. And here is a beautiful story that Rashi brings down and gives an incredible interpretation and explanation on this verse. Goy Echad Shal as Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha, a Gentile man once asked Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha, Amar Loi, he said to him, Ain Atem Meidim, do you not agree, Shakadish Baruch Urayas and Neilad, that God knows the future? Amr Lai, so the rabbi said, of course, Hain, yes. Amr Lai, if that's the case, he says, and it grieved in Hashem's heart. How could that be? Amr Lai, so the rabbi responded to him, was a son ever born to you? Amr Lai, so the Gentile said, Hain, yes. He had a son. Amr Lai, and the rabbi says, Ume Asisa, and how did you react when you had a child? Amar lai. So the Gentile said, Samachti v'simachti esakil. I was happy, I rejoiced, and I made everyone be rejoiceful as well. Amar lai. So he said to him, V'lai ha'yisa yedeya shaseife lamus. Did you not realize that eventually your son is going to die? How could you be happy? So the man says, Amar lai bish'as chedvasa. At the time of being rejoicing, I need to, be, to, I need to rejoice. I need to be happy. And at the time, when it comes to a time of mourning, I'll have to mourn. So Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha says to this man, So too is it with the acts of Hashem. Even though everything is revealed to him, and Hashem knows that eventually man, human beings will sin, and eventually they will die and they'll be destroyed. Nevertheless, he did not refrain from creating them. For the sake of the righteous people, that were destined to descend from them. So at the time of birth, Hashem only focuses on the birth and the good things. Verse 7, And Hashem said, I will totally obliterate, obliterate mankind which I have created, from the face of this earth, from man to animal to beast, from the creepy crawly things to the birds of the heaven, for I regret that I had made them. Rashi Zayin, Vayemer Hashem Emches Adam, and Hashem says, I will obliterate mankind who offer the Avi Olav Mayim. Man is of dirt, and I will bring water upon him, the Emche Eisei, and I will destroy him. The Kachnem Marlashen Michoi, therefore the term Michoi is used. May Adam Ad Behema, from man to beast, why are the animals going to be destroyed? Rashi asked, if the human beings were corrupt, why did the animals have to suffer? So Rashi says, Afheim Hishchisu Darkam. Also the animals perverted their way. The animals also became corrupt.
That's one interpretation. Davarachar, another interpretation is, Hakel nivra bishvila adam. Everything was created for the sake of man. The kevan shehu chaleh. If man ceases to exist, then what do we need animals for? Ma tzerich ba'elu, then there's no need for animals. Ki nichamti ki asisim, for I regret that I had made them the last Rashi of Parshas Bereshis. Chashafti malasais, meaning I thought about what to do, al asher asisim, for the fact that I made man. Verse 8, ches v'noyach, and noyach matzachein b'enei Hashem. Noah was a righteous man, as we're going to see in next week's Torah portion, and he found favor in the eyes of God. End of the Torah portion of Genesis Beratius.